So I find that um, many of my students get a bit confused when we talk about marginal, conditional, and joint probabilities. And also when we introduce the idea of univariate and bivariate. And so, so I thought it'd be nice to record just a very simple, short um, illustration of these concepts and make it a bit practical. And I hope that this will help um, get this stuck in the um, minds of my students. So let's give ourselves a very simple example here. We have a reservoir and the reservoir is conveniently a box. And it looks like this. And as typical in a reservoir problem, we want to try to assess what is the reservoir properties at different locations within the reservoir away from where we've sampled. So we have uncertainty. There's going to be probability and distributions and so forth. And so what do we have? So we will give ourselves this little box here and say, what is the porosity at that location? Remember that u bold is just a location vector and that we use the not to indicate that we have not sampled that, lo that location, unsampled location. And so if I'm asking what's the porosity at that location, what is that? And it could, the entire uncertainty could be represented as a distribution. What kind of distribution is that? And it turns out it's a marginal distribution. It's a marginal distribution because of the fact that it only considers one event or one property. It's just concerned about porosity. It's a continuous probability density function, and it could go between 5 and 15%, just for the sake of argument. Now, you could specify a specific event such as what's the probability or the event could be porosity greater than 10%. And then you could truncate that distribution and we'd now be talking about a marginal probability. So we have marginal probability from our marginal distribution and it would have some probability, I don't know, maybe 55, 60% I'm guesstimating based on the relative area. Now, we could also have been dealing with a discrete property, and we may have been concerned about the marginal distribution of shale, fine sand, and coarse sand. Shale, fine sand, coarse sand. And so we would look at this probability density function for the discrete case, and it would look like this. And you could specify saying, I'm concerned about the probability of coarse sand I like or sand, and now we're talking about a marginal probability where event B would be facies at that unknown location is equal to coarse sand, and that probability might be, I don't know, I'm guesstimating maybe about a third or 33% or so. Okay, so, so that's the concept of marginal distribution, marginal probability in the case of continuous and categorical for the purpose of estimating a reservoir properties, reservoir properties at this unknown location, we have not drilled there. So let's put that there and we'll just keep that. And now let's introduce the idea of permeability. We now also have permeability at that location. We want to know what it is and we also want to know porosity. So what do we in fact have now? We now have a joint distribution because we're dealing with more than one property. We're dealing with two properties at the same time. It's a joint distribution. It's a continuous joint probability density function because of the fact that both of these are continuous. And we could have a specific joint probability if we specified specific conditions on each one of these. Event A could be the probability porosity between 12 and 14 percent here and here, and permeability between 600 millidarcies and 900 millidarcies here and here. And so this box would be that area within that continuous joint probability density function. And so that location, we could calculate a single joint probability of having a value at that unknown location between those ranges. And so we would denote it like this. It's a probability. It's a joint. We can show it with the intersection symbol. We could show it with a comma. And we could also put an, um, an and symbol. Okay. So we could also represent all the possible joint probabilities in boxes over a mesh over this entire solution space of porosity and permeability. And so this would represent the entire joint probability density function 
and we could read off for any one of these boxes. We could visualize and we could understand in general how the properties of porosity and permeability vary or behave together. That'd be pretty useful. And so this has been the concept of joint distribution. Um, and this is this, and we have looked at also joint probabilities. And we have shown an example where we've calculated joint probabilities over mesh. And so, in fact, we're binning or discretizing the entire joint probability density function so we can visualize it bin by bin. So we've gone ahead and we've explained the case of univariate, um, where we have a single variable we're concerned, at, concerned with, the marginal examples, and we showed the continuous and the categorical cases here. We've talked about the bivariate, where now we're concerned with two variables, porosity and permeability, permeability, porosity. And we're looking at their joint relationship, and we can look at the entire joint distribution, and we can identify based on conditions, events, the joint probability of specific events um, for each one of the parameters of interest. And this would be porosity and permeability constraints. And the result is that we get a joint probability, the probability of existing within the values right here. And we can bin across the entire marginal distribution and look at the joint probabilities at all of these locations and analyze that. Now let's get into the example of conditional. In the conditional case, what we've done is that this location, we've managed to gather one of the pieces of information, porosity, but not the permeability. So what's the permeability given the fact that we have a porosity of a certain value or range? And so that's our problem. So we could, con we could look at the entire conditional distribution. So we identify that we're dealing with porosity between 12 and 14%. We could calculate the entire distribution of permeabilities that exist for all samples for which porosity is between 20 and 14%. And we have that entire conditional distribution. For our con continuous um, case, we can just draw it as a simple distribution like this within the range of values and it would fit within the overall joint distribution. We could also calculate a conditional probability. And the conditional probability would come from looking at if the specific case of porosity, which we had already identified as 12 and 14 percent, but then we say what's the probability of having a specific permeability value given that, and we could specify a range. We could say right here that we're concerned about the case where we have permeability values of, say, between um, 600 and, um, and something like 900 millidarcy. And so we could specify that, and I ran out of room there, but you see what I've done. And we could go ahead and calculate that conditional probability. What's the probability of having that permeability range given the porosity range that we already identified? And so that would be the probability of having that red square given we shrank our universe down to the entire orange area with the red square. So We've now covered for this unknown location univariate marginal examples, bivariate joint examples, and also bivariate getting into conditional examples for how do we calculate these um, probabilities, the marginals, the joints, and the conditional distributions and probabilities. So with that, now let's look at some practical examples of how we move in between these. How do we make do calculations given this information? First of all, how do we calculate the marginal distribution if we know the joint distribution, if that's available to us? And so this is actually pretty straightforward. We have the joint distribution. It's going to be continuous. We could draw it with probability contours. It could be complicated. And I just show it here with a blob. Very simple. The definition of marginal distribution is simply the marginal f of x given x the marginal distribution of x for all values of x is going to be simply the integration of the joint distribution f x y at x and y dy. So we're integrating over the entire range of y values. And so if we look at that, or we can get the marginal distribution of y by doing the integration of the joint over all values of x. And so if you think about it, all we're doing is we're taking that joint distribution 
and for a bin of x values, we're simply summing all the joint values, the joint probabilities, to get the marginal. And we do that for this bin, and this bin, and this bin, and that way we would build up this marginal distribution, where in each bin, we would have values of the probability to be in that bin. In the case of y, for instance, if we're trying to get the marginal permeability given porosity, we take the joint and we would integrate over all of the values of porosity within this range of permeability values, and that would get us the marginal probability of permeability. So that's how we get a marginal from the joint. So marginal from the joint. How do we get a conditional distribution given the fact that we have the joint and we now have the marginals that we just calculated. And so if we go back to the original equation for the joint, the, the, given the joint and the marginal, this is how we get the conditional. The probability density function of x given y is equal to the, you know, of x and y shown here, is equal to the joint x and y standardized by the marginal of y and vice versa. And so what are we effectively doing is we're taking that joint probability, the probability that we already had at the beginning from this, we're taking that probability and we're simply standardizing by the marginal. So we're taking the probability of being within this cell, a joint, and we're dividing by the whole entire probability of being within this conditional bin of a range of porosity. And we could do it also for permeability like this. And so by doing this, we can go from the, from the joint with the marginal and get the conditional. How do we calculate the joint distribution? What if we don't have a, the joint initially? Well, we've got different ways to get the joint. That's harder. And so one is a non-parametric approach, and I'm a frequentist, or I like to use frequentist um, st statistics and probability as much as possible because it's very simple and easy to understand. And so I can count. I like to count. And so um, the non-parametric counting method would be you can get the joint by taking the original sample data, assuming that sample data is representative once again, and basically putting a mesh down with all of the conditional bins of variable one, which could be permeability, variable two, which could be porosity, and just counting the frequencies that were in each one of those bins. Then what you could do is you take the total number of samples and you just normalize by that. And if you do that, you get these percentages right here. So in a box where you had one sample, you got a 4% chance. So it looks like we had 25 samples given to us. I didn't count them, but that's what I'm assuming. In this box, we had three samples. We got 12%. And so you can see we've actually formulated a discrete model of the probability density function for the joint. Now, so the counting approach is pretty straightforward. But you might look at that and say that's kind of limited, that's not going to be meaningful, it's very sensitive to the number of samples that are available to you. And so you might decide to use, instead of a non-parametric counting, you might fit a parametric model. You might determine that this is bivariate Gaussian, it's a Gaussian distribution of two variables. Maybe you know something about the correlation coefficient, maybe you're going to just try to adjust the correlation coefficient and the variances and the means of each one of the distributions so that you're able to fit, in general, the pattern that you see within the data. You could try to do that. You could calculate the raw statistics if you have enough data. And if you do that, you'll get the mean and the variance of each one of the variables, mean and mean and variance of each one of these variables, permeability and porosity. And then you could calculate the correlation coefficient and actually directly fit. That's all you need is the mean and the variance of each of the variables and the correlation coefficient between the two, and you've perfectly described the bivariate Gaussian distribution between these two variables. Or maybe there's something more complicated you want to do, but you could try to go ahead and fit. Once you fit it, you could, in fact, integrate over that over each one of these boxes and calculate, in fact, the joint probability in each one of the boxes, or you could just retain the continuous joint probability model indicated by these contours right here, and you could solve all kinds of problems. And so with that, we finish this short discussion about the concept of univariate and bivariate, marginal, conditional, and joint distributions and probabilities. And we've also shown 
how we can go ahead and move between calculating a from the joint, getting at the marginal, using the marginal and the joint to get the conditional, and then the idea of trying to directly assess the joint given available data and counting versus trying to fit some type of parametric model. And so I hope this was helpful to you. And so this is the end of this discussion.